Now that we have explored what quality loose leaf tea is, we're gonna dive into what actually Japanese green tea is. So this is our main subject of this whole series. We want to discover different um, Japanese green tea, but what actually makes Japanese green tea very different from other green teas, for example, green teas from China or from India. When we look at how the tea is done, this is kind of the main difference between, for example, a Chinese tea and a Japanese tea. Japanese teas are often steamed and Chinese tea are often pan fried. So the difference between these two is that the, the Chinese tea is heated up and nearly a little bit burned in, uh, in the pan fire system. Meanwhile, that the Japanese green tea with the steam bath is very softly touched. What does it mean in terms of taste when we compare these two? So when we look into the Chinese tea, sometimes you can uh, get a little bit of a toasted, a little bit of slightly roasted flavor, a little bit more of a cereally flavor with the tea. Meanwhile, with the Japanese green tea and the steaming method, a lot of the vegetal fresh and kind of um, sweet and also fruity notes are kept in the tea. So when we are uh, going into the Japanese green tea or when Japanese uh, green tea is mentioned and people talk about the taste often you hear, you hear a little bit this more this vegetal taste, a little bit more this grassy taste. But there's a vast array of different tastes in Japanese green tea and this is exactly what this course is for is to really guide you a little bit through what are the different tastes I can expect and um, it has to be said that also pan firing is a technique which is also used for one type of uh, Japanese green tea and this we're gonna all explore later. But um, when we look into the origin of Japanese green tea, it is clear that Japanese green tea is coming from China and the records show that the first monks uh, studying Zen in China, they were also in contact with green tea or tea itself. So that's why they actually started also to take these tea plants to Japan and cultivate them in their monasteries. One of the first records or the first record is actually of the monk Eisai who brought the tea plants back into Japan in 1191. And um, in this time, he actually started to cultivate with in his monastery tea. And this tea was first, uh, or kind of the first kind of tea which was uh, produced in Japan was actually powdered tea. And nowadays we call this matcha. So the modern word for this is the powdered tea, which is matcha. And this was really the first way or first time kind of tea was um, consumed from there actually it spread slowly slowly in the more in the more elevated um, classes also the samurai really liked the, the fact of the tea which helped them also to focus better on the battlefield um, uh, this kind of calm alertedness which is often linked to the green tea this often um, was also highly appreciated by the samurai and on a later stage it also got especially in the, in the region of kyoto and around kyoto there we really had a spread of beautiful places where also tea was consumed in very very beautiful tea ware. So this is slowly how the um, tea made its way through different classes and also one important point is the tea ceremony which evolved as well under Sen no Rikyu. He actually invented or he kind of um, um, he kind of organized and uh, wrote down as well the tea ceremony but this part here here Will was in Japan and he will guide you through the tea ceremony and what it is about. Before the development of the modern tea ceremony, tea was seen as an opportunity for the upper classes to showcase their wealth. They held gatherings in opulent tea rooms with fancy utensils and thus the early tea ceremonies became a constant game of one-upsmanship. Then a man known as Sen no Rikyu came along with a more humble vision for what the tea ceremony should look like. Rather than a gold-plated facade, Rikyu advocated for a rustic and small tea house away from the noise of the city. 
The first step of the tea ceremony begins not when you walk inside the tea room, but actually on the path leading up to it. While walking along this path, guests purify their hearts and thoughts and leave their worldly worries behind. In a symbolic gesture, guests also purify their hands and mouth in this water before entering the tea room. This allows them to wash away the dust from the outside world. The guests then wait outside the tea room to quiet their mind before entering. The tea ceremony is built on the philosophy Wa Ke Se Jaku, harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility. An example of harmony is shown in the gardens around the tea room. The gardens are to be an extension of the flora surrounding it, living in harmony with nature. The next concept is Ke, or respect. The guests need to respect all things, regardless of their status or position in life. This is demonstrated at the entrance of the tea room, where guests crawl through a small door. In order to get through the door, they need to bow. Samurai must bow, emperors must bow, and commoners must bow. Once inside the tea room, all guests are equal, regardless of their status outside. The third concept, se, or purity, is demonstrated by the tea master once the guests enter the tea room. Through a series of refined movements, the tea master cleans and purifies the utensils used in the ceremony. The concept of se does not simply refer to physical purity, but also spiritual and mental purity. The guests need to purify their mind of thoughts and worries when entering the tea house. It is only then that they will be able to enjoy something as simple as a bowl of tea in silence. Finally, after all three concepts are discovered and embraced, all people in the ceremony can embody jaku, or tranquility. This was the vision that Sen Norikyu had for the tea ceremony, and his teachings still live on, not only inside the tea room, but outside as well. The inside of the tea room is modestly decorated. Each tea ceremony follows a theme, and that theme is simply conveyed through the use of a flower arrangement and a scroll. The theme of today's tea ceremony is wood, and the flower arrangement conveys the leaves beginning to fall from the trees. The scroll on the wall expresses the intention of cleansing our hearts before the upcoming winter season. The theme of wood is also conveyed in the objects used in the tea ceremony. Here is an incense holder made from bamboo gathered around Uji. There is also another small object that is used to produce a specific scent in the tea room. The rest of the objects are used for the preparation of the matcha. First, we have the hishaku, a bamboo ladle used to scoop hot water out of the kama, or iron pot. A small square is carved out in the tatami mats to make room for this iron pot and keep the water hot throughout the day. Next, we have the tea bowl, or chawan. This is a clay bowl made by hand, inspired by Furuta Oribe, a disciple of Sen no Rikyu. The bowl has a certain weight to it that conveys the importance of what's inside. Next we have the fukusa, a cloth that is used to clean off the tea utensils before using them. This is a sign of respect for the guests and it is done in a series of graceful movements. The natsume, or tea caddy, is the vessel that the matcha powder is kept in. Matcha tea has to be protected from light and humidity to maintain its quality. The chashaku is the bamboo spoon used to scoop the matcha powder into the bowl, and the chasen is the bamboo whisk that's used to mix the powder into water and form a nice foam. To prepare the matcha for the tea ceremony, the host first must prepare the tea whisk and the tea bowl. She pours hot water from the iron pot into the tea bowl to warm it up. Then, she will take the tea whisk and gently soak each side of it. This does two things. First, it heats up the tea bowl so that it does not cool the matcha down too quickly, and it also makes the bamboo whisk more pliable. The chasen tea whisk is made out of a single piece of bamboo with very fine bristles that can break if it is too brittle. That is why she gently moves the whisk through the water first before preparing the tea. The host then discards the water into a kensui or wastewater bowl. The bowl is then cleaned with a different type of cloth, called the chakin. Once the bowl has been thoroughly cleaned, it is time to add the matcha. The host adds two large scoops of matcha into the bowl. 
In this case, the host is preparing usucha, a normal matcha, but she may also use more matcha and less water to create a powerful koicha, or thick matcha. Next, water is added to the bowl using the hishaku, or bamboo ladle. Finally, the host begins the whisking of the matcha. The bamboo whisk is specifically designed to mix the matcha into the water in a perfect way. The whisk also creates small air bubbles in the tea, giving it a smooth and creamy taste. The host starts by scraping off the sides of the tea bowl and then moves into a diagonal movement to create a foamy texture. Once the matcha has been prepared, the host presents the bowl to the guest, with the most decorative side facing them. This is a sign of humility and respect, allowing others to enjoy the most beautiful part of the bowl. When the guest is finished with the matcha, they place the bowl on the other section of the tatami mat. Sweets are also an important part of the tea ceremony. These are served alongside the matcha to enhance the sweet flavor of the tea. This Japanese sweet, or wagashi, is made with chestnuts to complete the wood theme of the tea ceremony. So this was a little bit of history on Japanese green tea. I hope you like this one here. But now let's go into the different tastes of the green tea. Let's explore the world of Japanese green tea. Follow me.